Hey, um, I get a lot of email about hub motors and wheels and spokes and rims and all of the above. Um, the common question is, I've broken my rim and I need to relace my wheel, and how do I do it? Well, first thing, you're going to have to find a rim, and you're going to have to either reuse your spokes or get a new set. Um, oftentimes, hub motors tend to use thick gauge spokes. Um, the holes in the hub motor will already be drilled for this size spoke, so it's good to stay with it. Otherwise, you need to get some uh, washers that fit on the ends of the heads of the spokes to prevent slack in the hole so that it doesn't bounce around when it flexes. Uh, you want a spoke head that's tight in the hole. Same thing with the rim. Most motors are 36 hole. Um, this, for example, is a Sunrim's Rhino Light 36 hole with stainless steel eyelets. In every spoke hole there's a stainless steel uh, supporting eyelet that prevents the rim from cracking when you tension up your spokes and get them real tight. Uh, straight up rims can tend to crack. These are better rims. But the problem with that is that you can't fit a 12 gauge spoke in a rim that's typically made for a normal bicycle wheel using 13 or 14 gauge. And uh, that means you have to do something about these eyelets to make this fit. Now I tried all kinds of things over the years, trying to drill them out, trying to cut them out with a Dremel, I've tried pinching them out with a pair of pliers, I've destroyed rims trying to do it, and after a whole lot of trial and error, I found that using a regular round file. These are used on chainsaws for sharpening the blades, and a uh, real simple tool, you find them at any hardware store, auto parts store, uh, anywhere they sell chainsaws will have these, you can buy them online, just a simple round file. And what I've done with a spoke and a nipple is turned it upside down so that I have a tool to work with. And using that, once I remount my holes, I can test and see if my fit's proper. Now, as you can see here, I can't put this guy in there. Um, so using my round file, and now I've been shooting a couple of videos, and some of these I've done and some of them are not. Uh, for example, this guy won't fit. Using your file, and uh, try not to put any pressure on your hoop. Until your wheel is built up with the motor and spokes, it's pretty fragile and you can egg this out or taco it. And that's going to make your truing process a real pain in the butt. So as much as possible, if you have a nice, good quality rim, try not to flex it until you have it all built. Um, at which point it stays together on its own. And as you can see, this won't fit. Take my round file. Now I'm not putting a lot of pressure, I'm simply holding my file nice and easy. And that should be all it takes. There it is. It fits in the hole. Uh, you want to make sure you have a fairly loose fit. If it's too tight, you'll have a problem getting the tension proper. And uh, take your time. You don't want to ream out the eyelet to the point that it falls out. It defeats the purpose. You want to keep them in. And uh, just push your way around all 36 holes. Another thing, when you measure your spokes, uh, you have to know the what's called the ERD, effective rim diameter. Now, what that means is the distance between the inside of the rim on one end and the inside of the rim on the other end. Uh, you normally do this by putting a spoke into your wheel and measuring the distance. Now, some rims have a deep V pattern where they bulge out, and the nipple of the spoke is going to sit further in, which means you need a shorter spoke. Uh, these are 190 millimeters, which is fine for a Crystal Light 4 series and one of these flat profile rims. Um, I actually don't know the ERD of this rim, but I know it will work. No, it doesn't mention. Um, but in another hour, this wheel will be built. Alright, so now all the holes were drilled into the rim. And um, at this point, all the spokes are in the wheel, but I want to cover a couple of things about building up a hub motor. Trying to hold the hub in your hand with all the spokes in it and a rim in the other, you can't do it. It's impossible. So, using just an old 
I think it was a table lamp at one point. It used to be my parents like 20 years ago. And I screwed on a couple pieces of wood with a 4x4, which I just drilled with an auger into the 4x4. The axle of the motor can sit in. Now I put a roll of tape underneath to support the motor and just a piece of wood right here to temporarily support the rim while you put the spokes in the wheel. Um, anything you have like deck of cards or blocks of wood or anything at all just to support the rim at the proper height in relation to the hub so you can get all your spokes in the wheel. Now you normally want to start at your valve hole which is right here. The spokes will cross over the valve hole and you can't put a valve stem on it to inflate the tube which is a real pain but um, that's why you want to start your pattern at the valve hole and make sure you don't cross over the hole. You'll notice that the rim has an offset so there's two holes down, two holes up, down, up, down, up, down, up and that corresponds with the ups on this side and the downs on that side. Uh, I was talking earlier about a single cross so you can see how spokes are paired one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Um, they only cross each other once and that's it. The angle of the spokes coming out of the rim are reasonable so you can get them tight. And you pretty much work your way through the whole wheel. I put all the heads of the spokes on the inside. Now on some hubs you can do in, out, in, out, in, out and your spokes here won't touch. You'll have a gap between the two. If you do a lot of dish, they'll touch on one side, not on the other. Um, there's a lot of pros and cons to building wheels. It's not rocket science, but it does take some trial and error and a whole lot of patience. Um, now, uh, tools to put the wheel together, along with my part tools, spoke wrench, which I've reamed out with the Dremel. Uh, I cut the slot to match 12 gauge spokes. And um, I've also found just a regular Mastercraft, I think it was, Canadian Tire brand uh, screwdriver, with my 6 volt drill that I've converted to, and well, call it an 8 volt lithium. Uh, the original drill sucked pretty bad. You had a hard time sinking drywall screws, but with the Makita cells on it, it's pretty cool. Uh, not a very heavy drill, so I start them with the hand screwdriver get the nipple seated all the way around the rim and then I use my power tool to take care of most of the work of threading everything in. Um, once all the spokes are in the wheel I normally get everything loose and wobbly I put it on the bike which I'll show you in a minute and tighten everything up nice and slowly. Alright so now I've got the wheel built and all the spokes are in. Um, You'll notice when you first put your spokes in that all the spoke heads against your hub will be out some. If you're reusing spokes, they've already stretched out and they'll fit into the hub pretty well. But if it's a brand new set of spokes, for example these crystallite ones, uh, the heads of all the spokes are going to be pretty much out. So you can keep threading all your nipples until that slot comes in. And um, at which point you want to fix any wobbles in your rim. If you got side to side, up or down, uh, figure out which one's the worst and work on that first. I normally use my brake pads. I'll set them up here on the bottom, spin my rim, and use my brake pads as a guide. If you have a truing stand, even better, but if you're only building one wheel once in a while, you probably won't have a truing stand and you can do without it, using your bicycle forks as an example. Uh, this will work fine. My rim, in this case, is centered on my hub. There's no dish because it's a front wheel. If I was building a back wheel, the rim would have to be off to one side to make up for the gear cluster so that your brake pads end up centered in and your hub and your sprockets and all that fit but on a front wheel none of that don't have to bother with it it's not a problem